Good evening. Uh, this has been a very full day. Uh, let me highlight um, the gist of our deliberations today. Um, this afternoon, uh, following today's briefing on the Sahel region, the Security Council held consultations uh, on the development of the United Nations strategy for the Sahel region. This was not the presentation of the strategy uh, that comes later, but it was an information on the run-up of the presentation of the strategy. The Security Council members uh, appreciated the close cooperation of the various uh, UN agencies and the UN Regional Office for West Africa together and in close uh, co coordination uh, with uh, concerned states and regional organizations they are expected to flesh out a comprehensive uh, UN strategy for the Sahel uh, region. This uh, strategy, uh, in view of the council members, should be uh, an integrated one um, uh, that encompasses uh, security, situation, uh, governance, development, the human rights, uh, and humanitarian issues. Uh, council members underlined uh, the importance uh, of an enhanced uh, coordination uh, on the various national, regional, and international multilateral efforts. Uh, some members uh, pointed in this regard to the European Union, which has um, already started to implement uh, its uh, Sahel strategy. And members welcomed uh, the plan to hold a so-called mini summit on, on the Sahel at the margins uh, next week uh, of uh, the opening of the General Assembly. Uh, I think it will be on the 26th uh, of September. The Security Council uh, also discussed the situation in Mali. Uh, council members expressed their concern about the uh, situation in Mali, especially regarding the security and human rights situation in the north of the country and with regard uh, to the political developments, uh, council members welcomed uh, the formation of an inclusive transitional government by interim president Traoré. They also uh, took note of the Malian uh, request uh, for assistance uh, to ECOWAS as well as to the UN uh, secretary general. Council members took note of uh, ECOWAS ongoing efforts uh, towards uh, finding a solution to the crisis in Mali. Uh, council members underlined the need to exhaust all means uh, of negotiation before uh, considering other means. And with regard to further steps, uh, council members reaffirmed uh, the need for close uh, consultation between the various national and international stakeholders. Just a word um, on uh, this morning's um, meetings briefly uh, following uh, the, the, the briefing of Special Coordinator Robert Serry on the Middle East. Uh, we, uh, the Security Council members, held consultations on the same issue. Uh, although this was a so-called routine uh, briefing and routine uh, consultations, the latest events in the Middle East uh, are uh, clearly on everybody's mind. Security Council members reiterated their strong uh, condemnation of the attacks against uh, diplomatic personnel and posts and urged all authorities to respect their international obligations. You know that the Security Council uh, had last week already uh, very swiftly agreed on two uh, statements uh, regarding uh, those events. Um, council members also expressed uh, their regret about the continued uh, stalemate uh, of the peace process. There was a shared view uh, that the viability of the two-state solution must be maintained, uh, and both parties were called upon to take active steps to rebuild trust and increase uh, efforts towards resuming negotiations. Last word on Syria. Uh, council members uh, reaffirmed uh, support uh, to the efforts of the Joint Special Representative Lakta Brahimi. As you know, uh, Mr. Brahimi is currently in the region uh, meeting with a variety of uh, interlocutors. Uh, Mr. Brahimi 
uh, won't be back in New York before the end of the week, uh, but we've been in touch with him and uh, with council members on uh, a possible uh, meeting um, uh, where he can report uh, on uh, his trip um, to the region. And I leave it at that. It was a full day, as I as I said. Yes, uh, yes, sir. Uh, in that briefing on uh, part of Syria, I just wanted to ask you. There are two uh, reports came out this morning, one for Human Rights Council and another for Human Rights Watch. Which Could said, you hold this microphone a little closer? Uh, I cannot uh, really hear. You. Yeah. You have to speak louder. Yes. Okay. Which which said uh, t uh, t these two reports said that. Uh, the outside forces inside uh, who are operating in Syria have now also become more violent, and their their actions, as also I mean, are also consummated with the what the government forces are accused of doing. So both the where how can Security Council and international community prevail upon these groups outside groups? I mean, you can say you can condemn and say something to the. The Assad government, but how do you prevail upon these outside groups who are now becoming a major force in Syria? Well, I, I can just tell you that uh, today council members expressed their concern about the deteriorating uh, situation, the deteriorating violence, uh, the plight, the humanitarian plight of the people uh, in Syria, um, and uh, they uh, underlined uh, the need um, to act uh, through um, the uh, joint special uh, uh, representative Lakta Bahimi, and they supported him fully, and that was the gist of what was discussed uh, on Syria today in the Council. Since you mentioned the Middle East, I would like to ask a question about the sanctions against Iran. Um, uh, you, there, are, there are numerous reports that these sanctions are affecting the ordinary people and causing lots of problems. For instance, like there's a shortage of medicine in Iran currently because of the sanctions. I'm wondering, under the presidency of Germany, is there any plan to address this problem in the Security Council? The situation uh, of the sanctions um, imposed uh, by the Security Council on Iran was not discussed today. We will have an opportunity uh, later in the week um, to discuss this issue when uh, the chair of the sanctions committee, uh, our Colombian uh, colleague, uh, reports on the implementation of the sanctions. What's the position about the effect of these sanctions on ordinary I, people? I, I just report to you today what happened in the Security Council. Okay. Thank you, Ambassador. I have two questions. Uh, the first on Mali. Uh, Ambassador Mbamba laid out the, the three-phased approach uh, that ECOWAS has been working out with the government of Mali, the interim government. Um, what are the next steps in terms of the assistance that they've requested from, from ECOWAS and, and from the Council as well? Well, the Security Council noted the interaction between the government of Mali and ECOWAS. Uh, you referred um, to the statement made uh, in, in the Council by the Ambassador of Cote d'Ivoire. Um, uh, apparently, there is um, a process of interaction between the two. Um, he also said that uh, over the weekend, the chief of staffs of the ECOWAS country are meeting uh, on the situation in Mali. Uh, so we have to await um, what uh, outcome of that meeting is and uh, in which way ECOWAS and Mali are, take, are taking the situation uh, to the Security Council. Do you expect them to bring it to the Security Council in the next weeks? Well, today uh, we did not uh, discuss expectations, but we heard uh, the ambassador of uh, Cote d'Ivoire speaking of, uh, on behalf of ECOWAS countries, and in consultations, uh, people expressed their view on the general situation in Mali and expressed, uh, as I said, concern about the security situation in North. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, everybody uh, wants the regional uh, organization and the neighborhood be involved and we expect ECOWAS and uh, the government of Mali uh, to uh, interact. Thank you. I, I just have another question on Syria. Today, um, Paolo Pinheiro, in his address to the Human Rights Council, asked for the Human Rights Council to refer his report, which included 
evidence of possible war crimes to uh, the Security Council. Do you expect the Security Council to um, to formally consider that report in a, in a meeting, or are you, are you just taking note of it? What what's going to happen with this? That? This was not covered today. two things that were covered today. One, on the Sahel meeting, was there some discussion of countries wanting there to be either a new an envoy or a coordinator for the strategy? And, and so could you describe that and what Germany's position is? And also this DPA briefing on, on electoral issues. It did take place. Is there some way to, you know, at least in some way, give some flavor of, of, of what took place and whether country, I heard that Bangladesh, Zimbabwe, some countries that normally aren't discussed in the council came up, if you can, you know, discuss that. Well, number one, um, as I said, we are looking forward to the presentation of a Sahel strategy, of a comprehensive integrated Sahel strategy by uh, the Secretary General. Uh, I believe that part of that comprehensive strategy will also be um, some, some word on the organizational setup uh, of the Secretariat. Now, I think that has to be uh, embedded into the broader picture, um, and I'm referring to your question. So I suggest we just wait uh, for the presentation of um, the strategy when it sees the light of the day. Uh, details were not discussed uh, today. And the DPA briefing indeed uh, covered electoral assistance of the UN. It was a, a broad uh, ranged um, discussion uh, and um, the Under Secretary General Jeff Feldman uh, briefed us on the activities of the UN, and we had uh, afterwards um, a lively and um, interesting discussion. Thank you. This morning, the Security Council has adopted a new resolution on Liberia and uh, to reduce the personnel on the ground. Do you think that uh, this uh, resolution will affect the security in the Cote d'Ivoire, which is close to? Liberia? You're right. This morning, the Security Council adopted unanimously um, a, a resolution on UNMIL, uh, the UN um, operation in Liberia. Uh, part of that uh, resolution is a reconfiguration of the uh, forces of the UN in Liberia. Uh, the military forces will be decreased. The police forces will be increased, uh, and, and that is uh, uh, a reconfiguration and will ensure that uh, uh, the UNMIL is, uh, continues to be a guarantor for the transitional process in Liberia and um, for a stable and, and um, smooth transition uh, to uh, the next phase that uh, Liberia will, will be going through.